and welcome to Faith and Friends. The month of December is officially here. We are in full swing for the Christmas season, the baking season, the visiting season, the basketball season. Am I missing anything else that happens in December? When is December not, uh, when is it unofficially here is my question. Before Thanksgiving. It feels like December, right? I'll go with that. <laughs> it's now legal for all of these things to happen. Is it still apple cider season? That is the most important question that I have. I think right in your heart, it's apple cider season 365 days a year. I would agree year. with that. Hot apple cider. It's got to be just the right temperature. Well, as we enter the final month of 2016, we certainly encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus, not just now, but into 2017. 2017 Faith Challenge will be a 12-month workout with Jesus. Mm. More information on that in the coming weeks. But here's what's happening on our show this week. Jennifer will bring us part two of her conversation with Faith Investment Services' Gary Reese. Their topic for this week is allocating finances and designating property. Also today, do you or anyone you know deal with food-related allergies? Well, we'll bring you some tips on how to make it through the holiday season without risking allergic reactions. But first, our scripture for the week. Let's set aside the Christmas cookies. Where are the Christmas cookies? You didn't tell me there were Christmas <laughs> cookies. We already so, set them aside. So. Thanks, guys. The <laughs> gifts and gifts, there's gifts. Also Andy, you are aside. missing out on so much. Let's focus on the reason for the season. You're distracting me. Of course, it's Jesus. And we start with a bit earlier in the Christmas story from Luke chapter 1, 5 through 7, and 11 to 13. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son and you are to call him John. Of course, John would be the one that would prepare ye the way for the Lord. And, and just everything about the story of Jesus, the lineage that goes all the way back to David, is just incredible to me, you know, how it was all set up for this perfect time and, and even involving John the Baptist's parents. You know, you, you touch on something there going back to David and the Old Testament. You know, oftentimes we look at the New Testament and we kind of think of the New Testament as being a game changer, that once Jesus came, the prophecies were fulfilled, he born, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, that, it, that the Old Testament maybe isn't relevant anymore, but that, that's not at all true. All the prophecies in the Old Testament were fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. So if, if you read the Old Testament, it's almost, you know, to use a modern term of spoiler alert, it's telling you what's going to happen. And then in the New Testament, we see that all those things did indeed happen. But you had to wait hundreds and hundreds of years. None of us really want to wait hundreds of years for God's promises to come through. But that was his plan, and it was the perfect plan. It certainly was. Well, that is what we encourage you to be focusing on this Christmas season, and it is important to not let consumerism of Christmas take over. However, we recognize that it is still likely you are still planning to give at least a few gifts to family and friends, and I'm sure Mark and Andy have already completed all of their Christmas shopping. You did it on Black Friday or Cyber Monday. It's all done, right? We, we were working on those two days. Yeah. I've got a list that my wife made. A <laughs> list that my wife made. <laughs> well, guys, we have some ideas. Some things that could help you. WalletHub.com has right. some low-cost or free suggestions, 16 suggestions to be specific, and we're going to take a look at each of those options. The number one thing that WalletHub <laughs> suggests is, as Andy kind of alluded to, make something yourself. Paint a picture. Bake cookies. Mm. Cookies are great because they're delicious. And you can eat them. You can eat them. <laughs> and you don't have the cookies sitting around for the rest of the year and you don't have to worry about what you're going to do with the cookies in another couple of weeks because all of a sudden you got all these cookies instead they get eaten you share them you pass them along with friends and family so those are ideas you can knit a hat the, the point is <laughs> utilize your own talents to make a meaningful gift why, for others. Why are you laughing about knitting a hat? If I were to knit a, a hat, hat, someone would not be very happy with their gift. Did it depends upon the size of their head. <laughs> there are 53 million people that know how to knit. But so how many of them actually do it well? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, theoretically, I know how to knit. You take two pieces of string, yarn, fabric, and you, you tie them together over and over and over again. It doesn't mean it's going to come out looking good. Just a bunch of knots. 
<laughs> all a bunch it is. of knots. Okay, those of you at home who knit, maybe we need to have. Can you videotape your knitting and send it to us? That could be so a favorite friend we segment. We could do we a could segment knit. and we could teach these guys how to knit. That could be very interesting. Actually, over Thanksgiving, my mom was te teaching my niece how to knit, and so I was paying no attention to them. Oh, well, that's good. I thought you were going to tell us you were, you were secretly <laughs> learning your no. this new trade of your life. No, was not. <laughs> Number two, sentimental. Try to think about things your friends or family have talked about over the past year. That means you have to listen. Maybe you own something that would be meaningful for them that you want to get rid of. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that you want to get rid of it. Something that they love and it would be sacrificial for you to give it to them. For example, a picture of somebody beside yourself, a special family occasion in that picture, a frame that might have something very meaningful. I don't have any of this stuff. I don't know what this is. No, you know about. what? I actually watched my husband do this very thing over Thanksgiving. Our, his brother was visiting from Georgia. He made a comment that he really liked my husband's snakeskin cowboy boots. Oh, wow. And so Dan decided to give those. He as gave a him the gift. boots right off his own he back. He did. He right off his own back. Yep, the boots off his back. <laughs> Why is he wearing boots on his back? <laughs> He's carrying awful, them. All the big boots. <laughs> Ice skating. But I, I think, you know, perhaps a deeper meaning there is pay attention to, mm -hmm. to the people right. that you're giving the gift for. I, personally, I, I always find it a little bit cheating when I buy people things off of a list because I, I, I would like to know them well enough to know what they would like and don't need that, that list, that list of demands of what they want <laughs> as a gift. <laughs> Number three, adopt a pet. Now, here's a gift my girls would really <laughs> like. However, keep Here, in mind, having a <laughs> along with the adoption comes the ongoing cost and care. So this idea should be pondered carefully. Don't just surprise <laughs> your, your parents with a dog. <laughs> Don't just surprise your neighbor with something. But if you are the parent and you know your family's ready for the responsibility, this could be a fun time to add a furry friend to the family. Well, it's going to be fur. It could be a fish. It's true. It could be a fish. fish it could is, be an fish iguana. Fish or low maintenance. Yeah. It could be an iguana. This is good. There's uh, something barking in my office. Do you know about that? <laughs> well, we've been meaning to tell you about cleaning up your office. And apparently some <laughs> wildlife have infested. But here's another idea. Donate blood. Hmm. Consider doing this in the name of one of your loved, one, loved ones. Perhaps someone in your family who has suffered recent medical issues and understands the value of blood donations. Check your local Red Cross for the monthly blood donor schedule. Plenty of opportunities to donate blood everywhere in your community. So just check with Red Cross. They can tell you exactly when and where you can do it. A great opportunity to, to, to give really the, the gift of life this Christmas season, which is really what we are celebrating. Christ gave yeah. us eternal life. This is a chance to maybe help extend somebody's earthly life through a blood donation. That's a good one. Another self-sacrifice uh, could be doing household chores for somebody. A great one for kids to say, hey, I'll do this for my sibling. Both people win in that situation. Uh, did you ever Any make those little like little coupons when you yes. were growing up? Like, I will do the dishes for my mom. Mm -hmm. And something. then hope they lose them so they don't never redeem them? <laughs> well, that's not exactly the point of the okay. gift. My mom yeah. threw that away and said, you're already doing the dishes. I don't, why don't I need a coupon for this? How about clean the toilet? That is a <laughs> gift. That is showing love. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a quick look at number six through 16. Number six, give a massage. Mark is getting ready. Crack Cracking knuckles. his knuckles. You're ready for it. Number seven, re-gift something. What? Now I thought, I was brought up being told that this one is a no-no. Yeah. You're really not supposed to re-gift things. In the things. age of recycling, what's wrong with re-gifting? It, it's all reusing, re, re, re-everything. Hmm. So now it's okay. Apparently. It's okay. Number eight, give your time. Number nine, Bestow some knowledge. Does that Teach count a, as a lesson. Gift? Well, but you know what? You could buy somebody <laughs> a year's subscription to a good magazine. That's not bestowing like your Like World knowledge. Magazine. Bestow some knowledge. It doesn't say your knowledge. Oh. It says some knowledge. It doesn't say whose. Okay. Buy somebody a Bible. That's God's knowledge. Well, that's you know? true. That's always a good gift. Number 10, enroll in a subscription service, which could mean signing up to pay for a low-cost monthly service or just paying the initial startup fee. Number 11, give tickets to an event. That's always a good one. Number 12, turn possessions into heirlooms. What does that mean? Well, you know what? Maybe you had grandma's china and you've had it for all these years and so it's time to pass it on to the next mm. granddaughter or something. Okay. It's, it's something that- Make it a ceremony? You know, they've- Do you have to light candles as part of the ceremony? 
or lace doilies involved in this ceremony. <laughs> they just add to everything, don't they? No, no animal <laughs> sacrifices, I hope. Oh my goodness. Well, if you're going to have meat on these dishes, you eventually you're going to sacrifice an animal. <laughs> Well, maybe you need some dishes for that sacrificial or <laughs> sacrificial service. Number Are we thirteen. About Passover again? Number thirteen is scour secondhand stores. Now, is this one okay? Is this okay to find secondhand sales? It's regifting mean? someone else's regifts. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Mark's in. <laughs> you can number find. Dude, there's good stuff you can find. Hey, everybody's got to use for something. It's just a matter of finding the right person to use something correctly. And sometimes you have to go through other services to find that perfect match for that perfect item. Mm -hmm. Number 14, redeem credit card points to get free gifts. I actually just did this for a gift for my girls recently. Saved them all year long and now they're gone, but the girls will be happy. Number 15, enroll the recipient. You didn't just spoil it by mentioning class. that on TV. Well, I didn't did say you? what they're getting. Okay. They don't know what I bought them. Okay. You're not listening. Are you girls? You're not watching? Maybe. Depending upon when this is airing, it might be too late for them. <laughs> or too early, or it might be right where there should be. And number 16, this one shouldn't just be for Christmas. This should be something you institute all year round. Just be there. The gift of time, hmm. sadly, is something that we don't give our loved ones very often. And this Christmas season, look for ways that you can just be there for your loved ones. Thank you to WalletHub.com for these gift giving ideas that are intended to be from the heart and easier on the pocketbook. I'm sure you have many other ideas that you could come up with as well. Well, from Christmas gifts to Christmas food, are you one of the estimated 12 million Americans suffering from food aller allergies? Maybe it's your child, which can make holiday eating nerve wracking for parents and children. Well, the Christmas season is meant to be a joyous time of celebration, but for individuals with food allergies, family get togethers and Christmas parties can be a challenge. Medical officials from the National Jewish Health offer some tips that can be helpful during any holiday event. Clark Powell reports, and then Jennifer will be back with part two of her interview with Gary Reese of Faith Investment Services. But first, here's Clark Powell. Before 11-year-old Zach Churchill goes to a class party, he has to plan and pack his own snacks. Zach has severe allergies, and with the wrong food, even a small bite can cause big problems. Actually, just yesterday I had an issue with that. I bit into like an egg roll, and even though I'm technically okay with eggs, like, you just never know, and I kind of had like a little issue and all that. Zach's not alone. Nearly 6 million children have food allergies in the U.S., an average of about two per classroom. It is a particularly stressful time for our patients with food allergies, and we, you know, we stress um, being prepared and, and having a plan in place for how to deal with those surprises. Dr. B.J. Lancer is an allergist at National Jewish Health in Denver who has four simple tips to avoid holiday hazards. First and foremost, he says, don't go anywhere without epinephrine and never eat anything you're not 100% sure is safe. It's the only life-saving uh, medicine we have for anaphylaxis and so um, anytime we could come in contact with something we're allergic to we need to have the epinephrine available. If you're invited to a party RSVP ASAP. Make sure you talk to the host early on about safe foods for your child or if possible volunteer to host the party yourself and have others bring non-food items. Asking guests to bring um, paper goods or you know games or craft projects instead of bringing the foods so that you can control um, what your what the children with food allergies uh, might eat. Finally, whether you're hosting or attending a party, make sure food labels are available. While most of us like to make an impression with our dishes, keeping the original packaging can provide parents valuable information and some peace of mind. Our patients and their parents become very good at reading labels and looking for those details. Keeping it in the original packaging and keeping the original labeling um, is a good idea so that um, they can review it. At National Jewish Health in Denver, this is Clark Powell reporting. Finances as individuals age and get older. Many people are on fixed incomes, but yet they have their set desires of where their money goes or how it's spent. Um, younger your children grow up and become the uh, executors of those finances. Mm -hmm. There's not always agreement as far as how the money is to be spent. You know, I've heard stories of the uh, the parent getting upset because the adult child is now changing the way things go. Um, I've heard horror stories actually. <laughs> oh yes. I've seen horror stories many times. And I want to go back to what I said initially. One of the things that I see causes a lot of horror stories or enables it is lack of communication, lack of talking about this very issue. Parents not talking to their 
uh, children about it or their grandparents and vice versa uh, because for whatever reasons there's a lot of emotions involved. Mm -hmm. When you open up about finances you're dealing with some very strong personal information so it's hard to share so you gotta kinda pick your spot and be kind and gentle when you do whether you're an older person or a younger person. But one thing that helps I found is that you have a conversation with someone who understands finances like a financial advisor many of them around just have a conversation most of them won't charge you for that just sit down explain your situation and reveal what you have and have a conversation around these issues start with you if you're the one that has the issue and a, and a concern then start a conversation now when it comes to things like property things that uh, have some monetary value and once that individual passes away it's going to be passed on somewhere to maybe they want to donate that to other organizations or they want to they want to know that part of what they own is going to continue to invest in those ministries that they appreciate um, how can they set things up so let's say a portion of their house is going to go to uh, a charity thank you very much yes yes that is a broad topic let me reemphasize that each situation is unique I have a lot of clients come in and tell me, well, my Aunt Bessie said this, my cousin Joe said this, therefore I'm going to do that. And that's not bad, but what you need to do is talk to someone that has some understanding about the broad spectrum of things that you can do. Anybody that owns anything can, out of the generosity of their heart, which we promote, give things away and make sure those things go at death or even before death to where they wanted to go. As a believer, one of the last things we get the opportunity to do is to give when we pass away out of our possessions and things that God has allowed us to be steward over. As a believer, as you know, we don't own any of it anyway. And we're sure not taking any of it with us. So it is a responsibility that is upon us as believers to do the best we can to make sure we're following God's line on what we wanted to do. We are about out of time and we have opened up quite a few doors with a yes. lot of topics that we could talk a lot more about. But one thing I've heard you say over and over again is the importance of a conversation. Yes. Conversations not just with family members, but also with professional individuals who can help. And you have said there are a lot of people yes. that are available, but I know that Faith Investment Services is a faith-based organization. Before we're, we're done, why don't you just briefly tell me what does your organization do and how can you help in these situations? We invite people to fill out a questionnaire before you come to meet with us. We do not, we only work with those that want to work with us. So we set the stage by filling out a questionnaire, then you're allowed to sit down and talk with me. We will talk with anybody as long as they're willing to put some skin in the game by taking the time to fill out a questionnaire. So when we meet, we just have a conversation. There's no selling going on. There's no anticipation of any ulterior motives or anything like that. We just have a conversation and see what happens because we found that each situation is unique. Many times we're able to direct people to go, go see this professional, go see this professional. You might want to consider this, you might want to consider that. And we can take care of that in an initial conversation very easily. And from that point on, there's a relationship started. And then the person decides whether they want to continue that relationship or not. So we're here as a resource person first and foremost, and then from there we decide how people can be helped in more particular ways. Each situation is unique. That's why I don't like making broad statements about every situation, because it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's what we try to do. And I know that personally you see what you're doing as a ministry. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. We appreciate that. We get a chance to pray with people and encourage them. And it's interesting when we see people when they share and open their hearts about things, it's like God shows up and gives wisdom and insight and clarification. It's not like he's been absent, but it's in the middle of a conversation about these issues that God is giving direction. And we always pray for clarity of mind and purpose and that we have peace of the decisions that we make. And credit to God. I mean, we have the opportunity to be an encouragement to people and that's what we're about. All right, Gary Reese. Faith Investment Services, thank you so much. If you'd thank like you. to uh, continue a conversation with Gary, here is where you can find him. The website is on the screen, myfaithinvestments.com, and his email address is gary.reese at 
cfdinvestments.com. And of course, you can contact us here at TV44 if you have any questions about any of the information that we just shared with you or more information about how you can get in touch with Gary Reese. Thank you so much Thank for you. uh, your wow. wisdom, your knowledge, and for coming to Faith and Friends to share it with us today. Thank you, my privilege. Father, I'm not sure what your plan was when you gave me life. What did you see when you looked at me? You saved my soul 12 years later at a little white church in the middle of nowhere. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. I heard your voice so clearly. Since that day, there have been many times of joy and times where I sat in awe of what you were doing in my life or in the lives of those around me. But there were also many times I was so broken. My insecurities and doubt took over and I could no longer see your goodness. I was consumed by hurt and couldn't feel your presence. I lost my faith. I lost my way. I didn't think I'd ever get out of the hole I was in. I never thought I'd find my way back to you. I was in so deep. I no longer believed you had a plan for my life, but that's just what Satan wanted. But then you came along right on time and you pulled me through. You reminded me what it was like to stay on top of the mountain again. I could finally see your working hand. I don't think I would have made it through the storm without you. I don't know how or why you have continued to use me. You put all of my broken pieces back together and made something beautiful. You had a plan through it all. It's only because of you, God, that I've made it safe thus far. You deserve all the praise, and I can never thank you enough. As I get to share my testimony with the world of how you brought me through, I hope and pray that they see you in me. You are my everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, that was the testimony of local author Brian Williams. Now, earlier in the show, we presented 16 unique and low-cost or perhaps even free Christmas gift ideas. We've got a bonus number 17 for you. Give the gift of reading material from a local author like Brian Williams, as his book can be found at Gifts of Joy, Barnes & Noble at UNOH, or online at Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com, as well as BooksAmillion.com. There are many local authors with quality books, and Jennifer has just a few of those. That's right. Here is Brian Williams' book right here, but so many other local authors, talented individuals that are writing. Kathy Burris wrote Lovely Traces of Hope, Dr. L.T. McGray with 100, Kim Lyons with 21 Days of Prayer Impact, just a few of the many books. Coming up later this month, we'll bring you another author testimony. Veronica Fox shares why she titled her recent book, Thank You, God, for Not Answering My Prayer. Well, forward to that. Now someone's prayer will be answered when we give away tickets to two different concerts at the end of this week. There's still time for you to sign up, but it is running out for that Josh Wilson ticket giveaway. We have a family of four pack tickets to the December 16th concert at Evangelical Church in Van Wert. Josh Wilson's, Wilson's song, That Was Then, This Is Now, is currently heard on all the area contemporary Christian radio stations. To sign up, do one of three of the following things. Register at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Email us at faithandfriends at wtlw.com or call us 
419-339-4444. The drawing will take place on Monday, December the 12th. And those are the same three methods available to sign up for our other concert ticket giveaways. Two tickets to John Tesh Big Band coming up December 17th at the Nicewanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert. This will be a great night of big band music at the Nicewanger. Sign up today. We'll draw the winner for the John Tesh concert also on Monday, December the 12th. Well, our fall campaign continues and we are continually to be so gracious to the many of you who are coming together to support us. Now, to be honest, we're a little bit behind where we were last year at this time. So if you've been thinking about supporting us and you're just not sure, we would certainly love to hear from you. Let's take a look to take a moment to uh, thank those that we have heard from already this year. I want to thank the, the Johnsons from Botkins for their gift. Emmanuel United Methodist Church in Elida, the, their gift, as well as a gift from the Thorntons as well. Claire Bowers from Elida, thank you very much. Also, Mr. and Mrs. Roger Estes, faithful givers and viewers, we thank you. Also, Harold and Mary, uh, thank you so much for all that you do for TV44 as well. well. December is your last opportunity to make tax-deductible donations for the 2016 year, which means you do still have time. Here are the ways to donate. Online, anytime at WTLW.com. It is safe and secure. Give us a call at 419-339-4444. If you call us outside of office hours and get our voicemail, please leave a message and we will call you back as soon as we get that message. And finally, you're welcome to visit us at 1844 Beatty Road or mail your donation to that address. All donations to be tax deductible for the 2016 year do need to be postmarked by December 31st. And by the way, thank you so much. Thank you for your partnership. Our goal is $175,000, which is literally just the starting point to launch us into 2017, and we're thankful for any opportunity, any amount that you can provide us to lead us closer to that goal. That's right, so thank you. Well, seven million Americans are expected to travel this Christmas season. If you're among them, then it's time to plan now not to end up with an unexpected trip to the ER. But as Clark Powell reports from Orlando Health, statistics suggest there's a 25% chance sickness or injury may face you or someone you love during your trip. Jason Ziegler and his family are packing for a trip to see relatives over the holidays. Unlike a recent vacation, this time they're hoping to spend a little more time getting some R&R &R and less time in the ER. Try to play it off and next day just couldn't do it anymore. Had to go to the emergency room and, and see what was going on. End up rupturing my eardrum and just had a horrible time the rest of the week. Which is more common than you might think. In fact, a new national survey by Orlando Health shows one out of every four vacations actually includes a trip to the ER. And experts here should know, Orlando is not only one of the busiest travel destinations in the country, it's also home to one of the busiest ERs. We really see the gamut. I mean, if you think it you know, and you imagine it, quite honestly, we've seen it. Dr. Stephen Corbett is an ER physician at Orlando Health who treats so many people from so many places he knows the word pain in 17 languages. His first tip, That's never go on vacation if you're not well to begin with. If you're ill or sick before you leave and you wouldn't go to work that day, you probably shouldn't go to your vacation that day as well. He says too many people try to push it and end up in the ER. And a surprising number forget to refill their medications before they leave. Corbett suggests using your phone to take photos of your prescriptions and upload important images or x-rays. You'd be surprised at how many people have something brand new or acute, like an operation in the recent past, and have almost no details about who what or why they had their procedure. Lastly, if you're going out of the country, buy traveler's insurance. Medicare and some private plans are no good outside the U.S. It's best to be prepared because no matter where you're headed, when it comes to your health, your trip can quickly go south. At Orlando Health, this is Clark Powell reporting. Well, next week on Faith and Friends, we bring you the documentary Project Ohio. Earlier this year, members of Ohio's Electric Cooperative gathered together to use their electrician skills to change the lives of residents in a small Guatemalan village. We hope you enjoy that, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks for joining us here this week on Faith and Friends.